Amen. We give God the glory for the far that he has brought us. It is not by power, it is not by might, but it is by his grace, it's by his Holy Spirit. And we bless the Lord for what he is doing in our lives. As we were worshipping, we thank God for the far he has brought us. We are at the last month of 2020. Amen. Amen. And we are in this series of prevailing in the seasons of life. And today we are at part, part six. Amen. Uh, last Sunday we said everybody need a season of battle. Amen. Amen. A season of battle is a season of rest. And at that place you dream. At that place you make discoveries. At that place you get to experience new dimensions. At that place, God introduces himself to you. At that place, God makes covenants with you. And that's where we left. And um, uh, Jacob makes a deal with God and tells God, if you go with me, it gives me food and raiment and brings me back a peace. I'm going to make you my God. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we're going to continue from there. And I hope that uh, from last week, everybody uh, made it their purpose to make sure that in the busyness of life, that you have a moment of retreat, a moment of saying, I'm going to pause and just have a battle moment. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I'm just going to pause and dream. I'm going to pause and just have a refreshing moment. A tiring moment, a moment where I can have some time with God. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So Jacob is on a journey. He is going because he's a man in obedience. He doesn't want to be like Esau, who just uh, marries out of necessity and who is just impulsive. And so his dad has blessed him and told him, you cannot take a wife out of the Canaanite women. Just go to Rebecca, my, your mother's family, and get a wife from there. So he, he, he has a purpose. And his purpose is to make sure that he obeys his dad and gets a wife from his mother's uh, relatives. Praise the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And in his long journey, he takes a moment, he pauses, and here he is. And now we are in Genesis 29. Genesis 29, everybody, your Bibles. Genesis 29. Amen. Genesis 29. Hallelujah. Genesis 29. Genesis Say amen when you get there. Amen. Amen. Are we all there? Amen. Genesis 29. And we're going to start from verse 1. Let's read uh, Genesis 29 from verse 1. Okay. Uh, if you don't have your pens, you're going to listen to the online and, <laughs> and write later. Amen. So we say we're going to have to be all settled and ready. Uh, then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. Then he looked, and behold, a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well, they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. So I want us to use the power of imagination and I want us to just take a journey with Jacob. Amen. Let's just take this journey so that you understand. And let's, let's just go with Jacob. Amen? Amen. So Jacob went on his journey after he has made uh, the, the vow with the Lord. He's had a battle encounter. He's refreshed. He has, he has new dimension. He is empowered. He knows I'm not alone. There is a God, the God of my father Abraham, the God of Isaac, 
we got a deal. He's going to protect me. He's going to give me food. He's going to give me raiment. He's going to keep me in perfect peace. He has made a promise. He's going to bring me back to my father's house in peace. So I'm well. I'm safe. Praise the name of the Lord. And so he journeys on. He's focused on his journey. And then he gets to where he is going. He arrives at his destination. And when he arrives at his destination, this is what he finds. He looked and behold a well. The first thing he sees is a well in a field. And lo, there were flocks of the sheep lying by it. I want you to remember that when Jacob was receiving the blessings from his father, what did his mother tell him? His mother told him, bring me a kid, bring me a kid from the flock. He prepared, they prepared a, a kid from the flock. So when Jacob saw, when Jacob looked up, he saw something familiar. He knew that he has gotten to a familiar territory, a place that he knew about because whatever scenario he saw was similar to the environment that the mother Rebecca had created back home. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, Jacob was an indoor man, but he was somebody who was just around his mom, tendering to the flock. This, uh, a shepherd boy taking care of his mom's business. Praise the name of the Lord. And so he looked up and behold, there was a well. And he understood this was a place, this was a, 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 an area that he was well conversant with. He understood what was going on. When he saw the flocks lying around, he knew why they were lying around. The Bible says there was a great rock on the mouth of the well. And, the, and thither were all the flocks gathered. And they rolled, okay, so, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place, in its place. So Jacob looked around, he saw what is happening, and he thought, this is something I can relate to. This is something I've seen back home. So I am sure this is where I was going. And so he asked, the, the, as he said unto the people, he said unto the people, uh, my brethren, where do you come from? And they said, we are of Haran. And he said unto them, do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? And they say, we know him. So the first thing that made him even start a conversation, it is because he looked around and he saw something that was familiar. Something that was similar. There were signs. There were signs. Amen? Amen. There were signs. And I want you to note that there were signs that said, Whatever you are looking for, the destination that you are going is here. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You know, if you don't know the signs to look for, then you might miss your destination. But Jacob knew, if I am looking for my mother's people, then there must be some familiar things that my mother heard with her people. There are things that those people do that are similar to the things that my mother does. Praise the name of the Lord. And when he saw the flock, when he saw the well, when he saw the shepherd, he knew. And from there, the signs told him, this might be the place. Praise the name of the Lord. Look out for the signs. Amen. Let's keep going. And he said, and they and he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel, his daughter, comes with a sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day. Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. 
I want you to listen to this statement so that you get what I'm saying. And 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 water gathered together, water ye the sheep and go feed them. This is information of somebody who knows what he's talking about. If he didn't have this information, he has he if he didn't have a clue, he wouldn't speak about this. He says, It is yet high day. Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. How can he speak about this if he didn't know anything about the cattle, about the sheep? That means when he was an angel man, he knew about cattle, he knew about the schedule of feeding the sheep, of watering the sheep, of watering the cattle. Praise the name of the Lord. And here we see another picture. We see a glimpse of Jacob that we have not seen since we began to talk about him. We see that he was not just an Indian man who knew nothing. We find that he, there is a place that is his comfort zone. He is knowledgeable about. He tells these people, it is yet high day. Neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. What are ye the sheep? And go and feed them. Give the sheep water. And then go feed them. That's what they are supposed to do. At this time, this is the time to water the sheep. And then go feed them. That is the schedule. This is what is expected. And this is what they said. And then they said, we cannot. Until all the flocks be gathered together. We cannot do that. Until they roll the stone from the mouth, the well's mouth, then we water the sheep. We cannot do that. Whatever you are telling us, we know that's what we are supposed to do. We know it is the time to do that. But we can't do that. Because we need somebody to roll the stone away. So that we be able to feed the sheep. We are here. We need somebody to roll away. We need a volunteer to roll the stone. We need somebody who can take responsibility. Praise the name of the Lord. And I say, you take a journey with me using your imagination and look at these shepherds. They all have their flocks. It is high day. It is time to feed the flocks. It is time to work on the flocks. But there are these men. They're there, and they know that Rachel is going to come. And the big question is, are they expecting Rachel to come and roll the stone? That's a question to ask yourself. So the Bible says, and while he had spoke with them, Rachel came with her father, for she kept them. Now, here comes a lady, a woman that is introduced in our story. Rachel came and for she kept her father a uh, sheep. Uh, there's another version that calls her a shepherd. And it came to pass when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near rolled the stone from the well's mouth, watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel, lifted up his voice and wept. Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, I can see some girls giggling. Yes, let me read again. <laughs> no, I, I... And it came to purse. When Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted his voice and wept. So look at this scenario. Jacob understand it is time to water the flocks. The sheep are lying around the well. I've just come up. I have realized this is where I was going. I've gotten to the place of my destiny. 
This is the place when I set out from my father's house, when I was sent out to look for a wife. This is where I was coming. I can see all the signs, the flock, the shepherds. These are my people. Why? Because my mother does the same thing. I have seen this. I know this. At this hour, it is the time to water the flocks. Praise the name of the Lord. And here comes Jacob and sees, and she he noticed there are shepherds who are just waiting. They are looking at each other. They are waiting for somebody to volunteer. Praise the name of the Lord. They're waiting for somebody to volunteer. I don't know whether you ever found yourself in such a place where everybody knows what to do. Amen? Everybody knows what to do, but nobody can step forward and say, I'm going to do it. Have you ever found yourself in such a place where everybody knows what is right and what needs to be done and it is time for it to be done, but nobody steps up to say it is time to do it. So here is Jacob having a conversation. He has already made sure and he has already known that this is the place my, my uncle lives here and my uncle has daughters and this is where I'm getting a wife. And furthermore, I have, a, I have a cousin by the name Rachel who is bringing sheep in a, in a little while. And well, he is just speaking and debating with this young man, guys, you need, you need to water the flock, yeah? You need to water the flock so that they have time to go feed. And they're like, no, we need somebody to roll the stone. You know, we need somebody to roll the stone. Well, he is yet speaking, comes Rachel with the flock. And when Jacob lifts up his eyes and looks at Rachel coming with the sheep, he looks up. He does not wait for another word. He looks up, sees Rachel, sees the sheep, and immediately the first thing he does is roll away the stone from the well. And feeds the sheep. He waters the sheep. After he has done all that, he's not even saying hi. And, I, I, and I'm just trying to imagine, I want us all of us to be there. Amen. Look at this. It's the first time you're seeing this guy. Amen. He's a traveler. Hallelujah. Look up. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. He's a guy. He's a traveler. He's journeyed for days. Praise the name of the Lord. You've never seen this. And he's over 40 years old. Hello. We're not talking about a 20-something guy years old. Amen. We're not talking about a graduate who just graduated university. This is a bachelor. 40 years and something years. Yeah. He's a traveler who has journeyed for some days. Maybe Rachel was used to come into the well and finding this good for nothing shepherds just lazy there waiting for her to roll the, the, the stone. But on this day, something different happened. Instead of coming to struggle with the stone, when she got there, somebody was right there, looked at her at once, looked at her one, one look, and rolled the stone and gave all her sheep water. Praise the name of the Lord. Immediately after he did that, turned to her, kissed her, and wept. What's that? You know, I was discussing this with my husband, and I asked him, What is that? How can somebody kiss somebody and cry? Can you try to explain that to me? And he told me that is very strong love. So I think. Try to explain to me what kind of love is that that will make somebody cry. <laughs> I don't want to tell you what he told me. Huh? Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pause right there. But that's love right there. Amen? I think that's love at first sight. But right there, Jacob found his purpose. Right there, Jacob found his purpose. And he knew, I came all the way from home to look for a wife. And I found her. I've gotten the lady I want to spend my whole life with. 
I found her. I found who I, I came to look for. He found his purpose. He discovered his purpose. He found it. And as I speak to you guys, and I thank God for each and every one of you, and I say it again here another time, I say, if every time somebody asks you, what do you want to be when you grow up, you got a dollar, how rich would you be right now? Yeah? And somebody told me, one of you told me, you know, be as rich as Benzos, because you hear that question every time. And I know that every day of your life, you are in discovery. You are searching. You want to know what is your purpose in life. Praise the name of the Lord. But that day at that well, Jacob discovered his purpose. He knew every waking moment, if there is something I want, I want Rachel. If there is something I need, I need Rachel. Praise the name of the Lord. That kiss, those tears were saying, I have found what I need, what I want, not what my mother told me I need, not what my father told me I want, not what uh, my brother told me or said to me, not what my man says. I have discovered for myself what I want in life. I want Rachel. This is my purpose. He discovered his purpose. And his purpose was Rachel. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. The Bible says, and Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother. And that he was Rebecca's son. And she ran and told her father. And it came to pass when Laban had the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, surely thou art my bone and my flesh and abode with him the space of a month. So for a whole month, they stayed together. But remember, at the well, at the well, at first sight, when Jacob saw Rachel, just by the actions that he took, Jacob saw Rachel. I don't know where he got the strength. I don't know where he got the action, but he just conducted him himself in a way that is that said, mm -mm, I need something. I need to do something. We saw Rachel and we see his conduct. He rolled the well, the, the, the stone. And he watered the sheep. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So the first thing we, we see is his conduct. At the well, we see his conduct. Praise the name of the Lord. And then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are, um, you are my brother, should thou therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me what wages you want. You cannot stay with me. And serve me for nothing. Now after a month, Laban says, you cannot stay with me and serve me for nothing. Meaning for a whole month, who was the shepherd? Rachel was the shepherd. So what was happening for a whole month? Do the math. So what was happening for a whole month? Rachel is taking the sheep out. Who is going out with the sheep? Rachel and? And Jacob, because at the well that day, Jacob found his purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. But now, here comes an opportunity for Jacob. Here is Laban saying, I have seen. That one month we have stayed with you. You are not just a idler. You just don't stay indoors. You have been working. Hallelujah. You have been a guest in my house. But you haven't been behaving like a guest. You have been working and you cannot work for nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you would go to a place and visit for a month and somebody looks at you and says, no, 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 no. Uh, 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 I cannot continue keeping you in my house for a month and not give you something. Or do some people go stay for a place in a week and they're like, where did you say you are living? <laughs> huh? Because you can't even wash the dishes. Your own plate and your own cup, you leave it in the sink. 
Hey. Hello. Come on now. This guy is a guest for a whole month. And this is the conversation they are having after a month. He says, you cannot continue serving. You cannot continue working in my house for nothing. Now comes an opportunity. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder one was Leah. And the name of the younger one was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed. But Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. I was reading yesterday, I think yesterday or Friday, and I realized among the women that the Bible calls beautiful, Rachel is one that the name beautiful, uh, the way the Bible describes Rachel as beautiful, is very unique. It is not just the outward beauty. But the name beautiful, the way it is translated when they are describing about Rachel's beauty, it is translated from even the, the word cultured. She was a woman who was beautiful and well cultured because she was an extraordinary woman. In that generation, she was a woman who was doing things that the women in her generation were not doing. A unique woman who was not only beautiful physically, but also working as a shepherd. That was a very unique, unique woman. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I don't think I, we cannot judge Jacob for falling in love with such a wonderful, wonderful woman. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And the Bible says Jacob loved Rachel. Now, what happened at the well has been now explained in words here in verse 18. Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve you. Now listen, Laban is not the one who is saying this is what you're going to do, yeah? Now Jacob shows something. We said at the well, he conducted himself. We see his conduct. Now in verse 18, we see his commitment. He says, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger son. And you see the commitment? After he found purpose, his conduct was directed to the purpose. And then in verse 18, his commitment is directed to the purpose. He says, I will serve you seven years for Rachel. This is what I will do. Whatever I have been doing for a month as a guest for free, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it seven years for Rachel. This is the commitment. This is what I'm willing to do. When you discover purpose, how do you conduct yourself towards that purpose? When you discover the purpose, what is your commitment to the purpose? Praise the name of the Lord. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to thee than I give that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed unto him but a few days. Uh -huh. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to read that again. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. But it seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had for her. Come on now. <laughs> I can see this. I have learned how to see the smiles in your eyes. Even if you all have masks on, I can see those smiles. Seven years seemed just but a few days because of the love. That he had for Rachel. Commitment. He's found purpose. He is committed. And because he's doing it with love. And this is where I say this. That at that place. Now that he has gotten to a level in life. That he has found purpose. And this purpose is combined with passion. This purpose is combined with passion. It is so dangerous if you are pursuing a purpose that you're not passionate about. If you're not passionate about it, 
then these seven years would seem like 70 years. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And this is where we have real talk. When we hold those career, career seminars, amen? Remember those career seminars we have? And we talk about careers. It would be so bad for you to get to that place, that age, where now you are now venturing into a career, but you got no passion for that career. You got it. You are in it. You wake up in the morning. You go work. You come back. But you got no passion for it. Look at what Jacob is saying. Those seven years seemed like just a few days because of the love that he had for Rachel. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Go with me. I still haven't come to the title of today's series because it seems like everything is going well. Amen. Hallelujah. Everything is going well. Jacob has found his purpose. He wakes up in the morning, he goes to labor, he works, and even when he's going to bed at night, he is full of smiles and dreams and he's happy because I know what I'm working for. My eyes on the, on the final goal, amen? He's happy, praise the name of the Lord. He got a purpose and he's, he's committed to the purpose and he's approaching he gets there seven years you know how we set goals short-term goals towards the long-term goals i'm sure he was calculating it's like okay i'm gonna start with counting so we're gonna count months yeah we count months and then we get to counting years and then when it's all the years now let's count days and then let's count hours hours count down and then finally, Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for the days are fulfilled that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, hello, and brought her to him. And he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto him Leah and Zilpah, his maid, for a handmaid. And it came to pass that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this thou hast done to me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Where thou, wherefore then have you beguiled me? Another version says, Why have you deceived me? And another version I was reading was saying, Why have you betrayed me? I don't know that, that culture. That they do weddings at night and then you get the wife at night and then in the morning that's when you discover uh oh i got the wrong wife so <laughs> i don't want that culture i want to see during the day i, want, I think that's why they, they uncover the bride i think that's where the culture came from where the, you put on the veil and the, and the man has to unveil you to see whether you got the right i think that's where it all came from because uh, you know I don't know because Jacob was deceived in the morning he, he, he discovered no this is not Rachel and today I'm calling the series the barrier season how do you handle the barriers that you meet along the way in pursuit of the purpose how do you handle the barriers along the way because life is not a smooth sailing. Amen. And you know the service we are calling it prevailing in the seasons of life. You're going to hit the speed bumps in life. This is the, the, the speed bump that Jacob hit. He has worked for seven years. And he is the one who is doing the countdown. Laban is not doing the countdown. He's the one doing the countdown. He's the one who is saying, it is time. Oh, by the way, my seven years are up. Give me my wife. It's time. And then Laban, and I was thinking, where was Rachel? Because Rachel must have been feeling so proud and loved. You know, knowing that this guy, this guy who traveled, this guy who really, 
made a big spectacle at the well. He's working seven years for me, yeah, you know? She must have been making all the girls jealous in, 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 in the village, yeah? Like, you know what, that guy, that traveler, keep your hands off him. He's working for me, yeah? You know? And then the night of the wedding, she must be somewhere crying, knowing very well, it's my, it should be my wedding night. But my sister is the one being wedded secretly to the guy who worked for me. He worked seven years for me. How do you handle the barriers that you encounter in your pursuit for purpose? Because life happens, guys. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. You set out saying, this is what I am going to do. This is what I am planning to do. In 10 years time, this is where I will be. Amen. How many time, How many of us have a 10 year plan? How many of us have a, a goal like this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do. Amen. Amen. Come and give me a, a show of hand of you have a 10 year plan or a 7 year plan, a 5 year plan. Come and give me a show of hand. Amen. I have come to tell you this. It might not always work so. Sorry to disappoint you. So what do you do? Uh-huh. What do you do when you hit those roadblocks? What do you do when you hit those barriers? Listen to Jacob say, why have you deceived me? Why have you betrayed me? I worked for Rachel. Why have you done this to me? And the question why, the question why is a question that you will ask yourself and is a question that many ask when you get to that barrier, when you hit those bumpers, when you get to that hill and obstacle. Why? Why? Praise the name of the Lord. So I was thinking there were so many scenarios that could have happened here. And there are so many ways that people react to barriers. Jacob could have said, okay, it happened, so all right. Amen. Come on now. Amen. 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 There are people who, who just say, okay, so it happened. There's nothing you can chill do to change. All right. You know, uh, okay. So what next? All right. I'm just going to be okay. I'm just going to now start to understand how I'm going to live with this. You know, life has happened. You know, now this is now my sad life. This is not how I should live. You know, he, should, he, he could have decided to, to, to stay like that. And there are people who have decided, like, now you've hit a block, you've found a barrier, and that's the end of life. There's nothing more you can do. And so that is your sob story. And that's it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Jacob could have decided, all right. All right. Forget Rachel. Oh, forget Rachel. Maybe it was not meant to be. Have you heard people say that? Uh huh. Have you heard people say that? Maybe it was not meant to be. Maybe I was not meant to be a, a graduate. I'll just, I'll just be an, I'll just have an associate degree. Maybe I was not meant to have a master's or a bachelor's. You know, I'll just, I'll just have a high school diploma. Maybe it was, it was not meant to be. That is one way of doing it. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But he didn't. That's not what he did. All right. So listen. Love and sin. It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Come on now, Laban. You knew when we made the deal seven years ago, you knew that in your country there are other rules, yeah? You should have told me. I should have waited for Leah to find a husband. Then I should have waited 
And then I should have started, I should have found another strategy to get Rachel. This is just but an excuse. Laban said, fulfill her week and we'll give you this also for the service, which you shall serve with me yet seven other years. Now, this is now Laban's agenda. The first seven years was Jacob's idea. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to understand this. The first seven years was Jacob's idea. He said, this is what I'm willing to do. This is my commitment. I am willing to serve seven years for Rachel. Now, Laban says, do this. According to their custom, you have to fulfill the wedding ceremony goes for a week. Fulfill that week for a year. Then after the week, I will give you Rachel. And then you will have them both as wife. And then you will serve me seven more years for Rachel. Now, this is Laban's idea. So now listen to this other scenario. Jacob could have chosen to deceive Laban and say, all right, I'll do that. Wait for the week, get Rachel, and leave and not serve the seven years. That's revenge. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I was trying to, to think of other scenarios of how we react. How we react to barriers. And this is a scenario of angry, bitter people who blame and live on revenge. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. There are people who encounter barriers and all they do is plot against anyone who raised an obstacle. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And they are full of unforgiveness and bitterness. This is a scenario of somebody who is saying, Okay, tuta ona. Hmm? Haya. Endelea tuta? Tuta ona. We'll see. But what did Jacob do? And Jacob did so. And fulfilled her week. And he gave Rachel his daughter to wife. And, Reb, Reb, and, and Laban gave Rachel his daughter Bilhah his handmaid. And he went in unto Rachel and loved also Rachel more than Leah and served him yet seven other years. Praise the name of the Lord. What did Jacob do? He said, okay, I hit a roadblock, but you know what? Rachel, it's my love, it's my purpose. You want seven years? I'll give them to you. He served the seven years. And he said he loved Rachel yet even more than Leah. Commitment to his purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. So what do you do when you hit roadblocks? What do you do when you hit barriers? Do you resign and give up? Or do you, do you become resentful and revengeful? Or do you purpose to just arise and keep going and fight through? Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Today we can learn from Jacob that he didn't lose focus. Through his conduct and through his commitment, he continued to pursue his purpose. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. As you can note, I am not talking about Rachel. I'm not talking about Leah because we said as we started this series, our focus is prevailing through the seasons of life and our main focus is Jacob. We can learn from all the other characters but allow me to focus on Jacob as I promised you when we started this series and we are learning, we are learning and learning so much. So as we continue on this, we're going to skip on the other characters because we are learning from, we are learning from Jacob. Praise the name of the Lord. And I know that there are so many other things we can learn from the other characters. But we are taking this one character of Jacob and we are learning from him how to prevail in the seasons 
of life. And in this season of barriers, he prevailed through his conduct and through his commitment. Praise the name of the Lord. So even you in life, when you encounter barriers, be careful of your conduct and stick to your commitment in your pursuit to purpose in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we stand on our feet? Amen. Our time is up. Hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration, and we thank you for your words today. We thank you, King of all glory, for what you have taught us today. That once we discover our purpose, Lord, we ought to be mindful of our conduct. We ought to be committed to that, and we ought to be passionate about the purpose of God. And we pray that when we encounter barriers and speed and speed bumps, Lord, and roadblocks along the way, help us, Lord, not to resign and become resentful, revengeful, oh God. But help us, Lord, to be resilient, Lord, and to push through King of all glory. Just like Jacob continued, pushed through until he received what he purposed to receive. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. You got the glory. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen. I hope and I pray that in life that you're going to discover your purposes. Amen. And uh, you're going to pursue it. You're going to be mindful of your conducts. You're going to be committed. And if when you hit those barriers, don't become resentful or resign and just yeah, give up. Be resilient. Push through until you achieve. Amen? Amen? For the glory of God. It is time to give. And as usual, we give through uh, cash up and we give through... Uh, you, for those who are in here and you you give in uh okay we have our asha angel passing the basket around uh if you give it you're going to mail a check uh they can mail it at 40 vinyl square north chelmsford uh north chelmsford massachusetts the zip code is uh 01863 the cash up number is 072 <laughs> The cash up number is wow, I'm blank. The cash up number is 978 <laughs> All right, so for the teens and twins, for the teens and twins, this Saturday is the final Saturday. The parents are joining. Yay! Uh, <laughs> Yeah, we're done for this fall session. The parents are joining this Saturday and um, we, we're having a wonderful time. The finals, the final exam is due on Friday. The assignment this week is due on Wednesday. So this Wednesday, Wednesday by midnight. That's a change for this week. The assignment is due Wednesday by midnight. The final is due on Friday by midnight. On Saturday, you're logging in with your parents, with your guide, guardian. If the parent is not available, they're supposed to record a one-minute video so that it can be played during the, the class, the, during the Zoom meeting. And then uh, everybody is going to receive their package in the mail by Christmas. All right, so parents, send in your names and your sh uh, mailing address to teacher patients. So if you're a parent of the twin or the teen and you have not sent in your mail, uh mailing address to teacher patients please do so this week so that the the teachers may be able to mail out everything on time amen uh and then the prayer meeting continues on tuesday thank you mickey thank you mickey you did a good job and precious good job and uh, this week i wasn't feeling well i was off and you guys took over did an amazing job god bless you god bless you i was told you guys did a good job i was really out of it and thank you for standing in the gap god bless you god bless you so we continue with the choose the prayer meeting the number to call the conference number to call is 978 419 
Christmas is almost here. Christmas is almost here. So the Christmas service, the Christmas service is, is going to be totally, totally, you guys doing it. Everything from like, from the word go, everything. Everything is going to be you. Uh, so you're going to release the program, everything, or everything. Yeah, please. Yeah. All right. So praise wanna sing a song? Yeah. All right. So praise gonna sing a song before we close. Before we say